There are images, there are movies, things that we are constantly consuming. And coded in those images are agreements about ourselves, about the way that the world works, about what love looks like. It's the way in which we understand our value. How is a, a young girl or a young boy supposed to feel if they don't see themselves affirmed? And so I think that there is a responsibility that image makers have in order to show humanity as it is. I really look at myself as a storyteller and I am using whichever medium I feel best tells the story. This was a shoot that I did and the theme was America. And so my question is, what is America? Who's in America? Who are the invisible people? And for me, it was black women. I'm like, black women are the people who have really built this country. They've been at the front of every civil rights movement, every protest. And so that for me is America. And so that's what I used for the cover. These hairstyles I pulled totally from like Ebony Magazine, 1970s. So you can see even something as simple as that little tendril curl, for me is like super important. And it's interesting, you actually see that in this image. Like we actually use that for like the hairstyle. I grew up in the suburbs of St. Louis, Missouri. I've just always been super curious about the world. You know, I would read encyclopedias for fun. My father's a pastor, um, and so church was a big part of our lives. I loved going to church. I loved singing. I loved music. <laughs> My mother made these clothes. And so these things informed the way in which I see the black church in itself is theater. Women marching around the aisles, that is a runway. My mother getting ready for church, seeing like her slip showing, like just like underneath her pencil skirt, the way in which she wore her hat. These are the images, the flashes of memory visually that I grew up with that ended up feeding my creative spirit. Those very early experiences helped me direct fashion shows with amazing brand Pierre Moss in New York with the choir of 75 people. I believe that the thread that weaves through all of my work is about Black beauty. It is about creating images, experiences, um, concepts that maybe we haven't spoken about before. So I'm always looking at records as well for a sense of inspiration and just like history. Um, this is. <laughs> What happens to my work sometimes when I'm shooting test prints? Um, I guess they end up on records. This is a piece of a test from my personal work. So like I said, I do um, these surrealist bodyscapes and this was me testing what does it look like if I bring in another element, like a flower. A lot of times blackness is about you know, and at least in America about the history of slavery. But are we creating generative images? What about the black body as, as the source of a future of uh, growth? Um, and so that's what I was kind of working on um, with this series that I guess I'm still working on. You don't have to be, you know, thin and blonde and blue-eyed in order to be interesting, right? Or to be worthy. 
I think that replacing these images and just showing the beauty and, and breath of, of life and life lived is really what I'm after. So this is a show I curated called Fashioning the Black Body. For me, the cornerstone of this exhibition is this house. And when you look at it, it looks like a house. And so you say, it's a house. But it's not a house. It doesn't do any of the things that a house is supposed to do. For me, that is a representation of blackness and the black body. So how much of my being like is tied to what you need me to be. I find that that is a, a space that black people and women or any marginalized group of people find themselves in. I am fighting against what you need me or what you think I am. In this piece um, by Mario Moore, you know, he, there are five black men in hoodies. For me, the hoodie is really speaks to that idea of space between my body and how I'm projecting myself in the world, and then the space between how I'm being perceived and that projection. So, for example, it's cold outside, a guy puts on a hoodie for protection, right? As an armor. However, via the gaze of a police officer, what for him, from his perspective, is armor, is protection. From a gaze of a police officer, it disintegrates it, right? It now makes you a target. Now you're actually more vulnerable than you were than before you put the hoodie on. That is what I mean by the distance between space, right? Between my body and its perception. So this is actually a self-portrait. So this is the artist. And you can see he's like in like business casual wear, right? Just kind of normal clothes. And what he's really speaking about is he's, he almost looks like his body is laying lifeless in the middle of a street. So he's showing that even, even if I do what you say and dress the way that I'm supposed to, I'm still trapped. And the show is really about the various ways we can explore that. Bike riding is really an act of being present. It's actually a big part of, of my practice. Just me and the wind and my head. I'm by myself, you know, I'm free. Those moments of intense connection between mind and body and spirit, and they all are at work, those are, I think, the most revelatory moments for me and the most productive. You can really see the scale of New York, like you can kind of take it in. The water and like the skyline. And it's also cool to like, just think about being in a place for 16 years and feel like some, somewhere, somehow, like you've made some kind of dent, um, even in all of this. In the process of creating my recent cover for Vanity Fair with Viola Davis, in thinking about how I wanted to capture Viola and also the times in which we were living, right, that the pandemic, um, and then also the protest on the streets, I wrote an essay about Viola Davis as the Black Athena and the Black Madonna. Like I think an image like this, which is super simple, really speaks to that concept of like the black Athena, even just like the bold metallic jewelry and the pose, right? You know, she's proud, right? And that she's unapologetically herself and also unapologetically black. After writing this essay, I'm just scouring images, just scouring images, looking at things that have interested me in the past. And I came across the image of the scourged back when I saw this image of, of Peter Gordon is his name. 
And I looked at the line of his arm um, and his, his wrist uh, at his waist. I was like, ah, that's it. And the image that ended up you know, being the cover was a recreation and a reclamation, but then also a study on color and, and silhouette and what does blue mean to black people. What does it look like when we see her back, the strength, the beauty, Viola in silhouette, where she is recognizable and then not recognizable, the silhouette of the Afro and what that means, you know, on a magazine cover. So all of these things are feeding into this one image. So I intentionally made the image dark. Traditionally with magazine covers, we brighten it and we lighten it. And we want to see everything. We want to see the shadows. And, you know, I intentionally kept the highlights and the range of the image very low so that her earring, the, um, the gold earring, was the highlight and that everything else was brought all the way down. It just forces you to actually look at it instead of it giving you itself. You have to bring yourself to it in order to understand it. This is what we do as a people with this history, with our oppression, with our pain. We create beauty out of it. This is what we've historically done. Jazz, hip hop, dance, gospel, spirituals, cuisine. We have taken scraps, we have taken the challenges of oppression in this country and created pure, beauty with it. And that is what I was really going for in the creation of this image. My hope was that it allowed for people to bring themselves to the image and wrestle with whatever they needed to wrestle with. Me being the first Black photographer to shoot for Vanity Fair, you realize that the work that you're doing really is about service. Like, how can we create a world or a system or an industry that allows for for those who maybe need permission, right? Maybe are looking for permission to be, for them to see themselves again reflected in, you know, places of beauty and, and, and power and being audacious. I think even myself, like, I'm looking for permission to be myself. And so I'm constantly seeking it and constantly looking for a way in which to give others permission to do the same.